Now let us look at the question number 29 and this question number 29 is again from the subject which is algorithms and they are saying a 5 array tree is a tree in which every internal node has exactly 5 children. So every internal node has exactly 5 children and here the word exactly is very very important exactly okay and the number of left nodes in such a tree with 8 internal nodes will be. Now here when they are saying the left node, I have never studied the concept of left node because it will be very ambiguous. Let us say if you have a node like this, so uh, it is having 5 children, then what will be considered as a left node? Whether you are going to consider this node as a left node or all these 4 nodes will be as a, acting as a left node. Now if uh, they are asking you a left node, then they should give a definition of a left node. Now what I am assuming is instead of asking the left node, they are asking what is the total number of leaf nodes. So there's a spe spelling mistake or there's a simple typing mistake here. Now they are asking a 5 array tree is a tree in which every internal node has exactly 5 children and the total number of leaf node they are asking when there are 8 internal nodes. So let me uh, draw solve it using induction. The first step is showing, showing the number of nodes. So here it is total number of nodes. Okay. The second step is showing the number of leaf nodes and the third is showing the number of internal nodes okay so these three things that we have to find out and accordingly we can also create a formula for this right if we have only one node if we have total number of nodes is one so that one node will be a leaf node there is no internal nodes correct now if this one node is having all the five children because they are saying exactly so exactly what is important so it is having all the five children so total number of nodes here is six so this one and five here so five here and one here so here total number of leaf nodes will be five and total number of internal nodes is one now if uh, they are saying in which every internal node has exactly five children so let us say it is having all the five children four and five so it is having all the five children so one two three four and five so five children here and uh, four children here so uh, just count the total number of nodes now so it is having uh, five five here plus uh, total five here plus one so which is having 11 so total number of nodes is the total number of nodes are 11 then the number of leaf nodes all these are the leaf nodes as well as all these are the leaf nodes so total number of leaf nodes will be nine and number of internal nodes is two now let us say this node is also having five children okay so it is also having all the five children. Now the total number of nodes are 5, 1 here, that is 1, plus 5 here, plus 5, plus 10 here. So that is going to give us 16. So total number of nodes are 16. Now for this case, what is the total number of leaf nodes? So the leaf nodes will be, all these will be the leaf nodes, these are the 5 leaf nodes. All these will be the leaf nodes, these are the 5 leaf nodes and all these three will be the leaf nodes so it is 13 correct so 13 will be the leaf nodes and the total number of internal nodes are 3 now you can see in every step we have a difference of 5 here 5 here we have a difference of 5 here we have a difference of 5 here and again in the next step again we are going to get a difference of 5 so next will be uh, the total number of leaf no uh, total number of nodes will be 21 and here we get a difference of 4 here 4 and here 4 so again we are going to get a difference of 4 so that is going to represent 17 and here we get a difference of 1 1 1 right so next will be 4 in the same way you can also extend it to the total number of internal nodes as 8 so this is one way of solving by doing induction but at the same time we can also derive a formula or you can see we can also devise a formula for this now how the formula will look like now you can clearly see if this is these are the internal nodes now every internal node will be having uh, a child uh, every internal node will be having five childs correct and that uh, node itself right so what we can do is we can derive a formula with this see if the total internal nodes are zero so it will be zero multiplied by five plus one the first case okay the second case is total internal nodes are 1 so this can also be find it out 1 multiplied by 5 plus 1 next is 2 so this can also be find it out like this 2 multiplied by 5 plus 1 next is 
3. So this can also be find it out like this 3 multiplied by 5 plus 1 and this can be find it out 4 multiplied by 5 plus 1 and uh, this 4 is these are representing the number of internal nodes okay so formula will be something like this number of internal nodes internal nodes multiplied by 5 plus 1 okay now when they're asking the number of uh, internal nodes are 8 so total number of nodes will be 8 into 5 plus 1 which is going to be 41 so if we have 8 internal nodes in that case the total number of nodes will be 41 correct now we know the total number of internal nodes so how we can find the total number of leaf nodes that will be 41 minus internal nodes will be equal to the number of leaf nodes number of leaf nodes okay so that will be 41 minus 8 which is going to give us the answer as 33 so there will be total of 33 leaf nodes correct so the correct answer to this question is option number 2 which is saying total 33 i hope that you understood the question number 29 and it was very easy but you should know how to derive this formula step by step again this question is not asking about your computer science knowledge rather this is asking about your aptitude knowledge the next is consider boolean function of n variables the order of an algorithm that determines whether the boolean function produces an output one or not now this is a satisfiability problem i hope that you understand the concept of np you understand the concept of np complete and you un understand the concept of np hard np hard as well as you also understand the concept of p problem so p problems np problems np complete problems and np hard problems okay now here when we discuss about the np hard problems we also we consider the problems like traveling salesman problem circuit satisfiability problem and so on so this problem that they are asking this is actually circuit satisfiability problem and for this the solution that exists is an exponential solution okay it's an exponential solution but still for your reference because i don't need this reference but for only for your reference i uh, just create use of paragraph here that you can read it out which is explaining the satisfiability problem of this particular circuit so it is the option number four that is the circuit satisfiability problem because this problem can only be solved into this time which is n square 2 raised to power n so it is n square 2 raised to power n which is a circuit satisfiability problem and it is a very difficult problem okay so answer is option number four now they're asking to finite state machines are said to be equivalent so there are two machines when can you say that they are equivalent number one have the same number of edges this is wrong have the same number of states this is also wrong recognize the same set of token this might be right have the same number of states and edges that is also wrong see if we have two machines and if both these machines are having exactly the same number of edges same number of states that does not guarantee that the language which is recognized by this machine uh, or the input that is recognized by these two machines will be exactly the same so they can be different okay so i also uh, include a paragraph for this for your understanding uh, when can we say that equivalence of finite state machines and we have equivalence of state and we have strongly connected machines so we only need definition one which is equivalence of finite state machine so you can read this definition um, two finite state machines can only be uh, considered same or equivalent if they uh, input, accept the same input language correct so for this, this answer is option number three that is to recognize the same set of tokens now the question number 32 says the finite state machine in figure below uh, what language is it accepting now again this is a very easy machine and i hope that you understood uh, how we got how we created this diagram and it is one of the easiest problems that you can encounter in um, theory of computation uh, because see this is one of the easiest problem, very easy problem correct now how we encountered this problem so we are saying that uh, if we have uh, a language summation is equal to a comma b if you have a language which is summation is equal to a comma b now the language is something like this set of all strings set of all strings which is having odd number of a's as well as odd number of b's odd number of b's okay so how we create this machine so you can see uh, it, this is representing the number of a's and this is representing the number of b's so in a machine number of a's can be ev uh, even as well as number of b can be even 
नंबर ऑफ ए कैन बी इवन नंबर ऑफ बी कैन बी ऑड नंबर ऑफ ए कैन बी ऑड नंबर ऑफ बी कैन बी इवन एंड बोथ ऑफ देम कैन बी ऑड सो इफ वी हैव अ लैंग्वेज लाइक दिस नाउ हियर दिस इज रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय वन स्टेट एज्यूम इट इज क्यू नॉट दिस इज रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय अनदर स्टेट एज्यूम इट इज क्यू वन दिस इज रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय अनदर स्टेट एज्यूम इट इज क्यू टू एंड दिस इज रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय अनदर स्टेट एज्यूम इट इज क्यू थ्री सो वी कैन ड्रॉ इट लाइक दिस विल बी हैविंग फोर स्टेट्स दैट इज क्यू वन क्यू टू क्यू थ्री एंड वी हैव क्यू फोर ओके सो here the first state this is representing uh, the number of a's are b's are both are even if you get one more a then we go to the state q2 uh, because number of a's are odd and number of b's are even one more a we go to here uh, if you get one more b then we can go here and one more b we can go here because it is representing this is representing that uh, both are even q2 is representing that uh, number of a's are odd number of b's are even Q3 is representing number of A's are even, number of B's are odd, and number Q4 is representing number of A and B both are odd. Okay, so you can draw, you can understand this, you can draw uh, this machine here, and you can create this because I've already created this, covered this in my video lectures many times. Okay, I think I created three, four lectures just on this one. So I think you understood this concept. So um, option is any string of odd number of A's is wrong, B is wrong, any string of even number of A's and odd number of B's is also wrong. So correct answer is option number four. Any string of odd number of A's and odd number of B's, that is, the correct answer to this question number thirty-two. Okay. Now, uh, let us look at the question number thirty-three. 